You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Welcome back to Where You Live. I am Gene Sullivan. We're broadcasting uh, from the Natural Green Lawn and Landscape Studios. We're brought to you by Extreme Exteriors and American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency. As an American Family Insurance agent, Kim believes that there's much more to insurance than the policy itself. It's about providing you with dependable protection and service. Kim believes that trust and credibility can't be demanded. It can only be earned by what you say, by what you do. Give her a call, 651-482-1598, and tell her that you were sent by where you live. It's now time for a message for the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association. The MHA Minute is brought to you by Start to Finish Maintenance Contractors. Start to Finish provides 24-hour service for all your home and business maintenance needs. Call Start to Finish today at 952-259-1219 for your home, for your business, for your peace of mind. Did you know that the top reason renters do not renew their leases is not because of rent increases? The biggest complaint among renters and the most important gauge of renter satisfaction is how the management responds to maintenance requests. Responding to maintenance calls quickly and effectively makes for happy residents. Happy residents make for reduced turnover. Reduced turnover makes for better cash flow. That's just one of the hundreds, thousands of things you can learn from the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association, the best, most comprehensive resource in the state for owners of everything from a duplex to hundreds of units, and for townhome and condo associations as well. MHA holds 135 different classes each year for owners and on-site staff, including in-depth certification courses for maintenance and management professionals. In fact, the most widely recognized certifications for apartment industry professionals across the United States were designed right here in Minnesota by MHA. Find out more by visiting mmha.com. That's two M's, mmha.com. We've been talking uh, this entire time here today on today's show about uh, this new FHA policy uh, that is going to shift, and a lot of condominium associations are now going to be ineligible to receive FHA financing. Now, of course, FHA financing is something we talked about was being used Uh, primarily as a tool for buyers who want to be able to purchase a home. Usually FHA financing is considered a first-time buyer's um, help because it allows the person to come in with a much smaller percent down uh, for the down payment, like 3 3.5% versus a 10 or 20% down that a lot of conventional loans require. the guidelines have been a, a little bit lighter, although, as we've stated over the last few years, FHA has been requiring the association where you live to be recertif- recertified with FHA. Um, and so it's not they're not just taking a look at the, that buyer anymore. But there is another consequence that others aren't thinking about. And if you know, and this is now I'm addressing are government officials who in their uh, infinite wisdom, and I mean that sarcastically, are saying that uh, we need all of these new regulations for FHA financing. One of the biggest things that they are going to be doing is destroying the ability for a lot of older and elderly people who are on fixed incomes from being able to continue and live and see a standard of life that will be helpful to them in the last years of their life. Am I just, uh, are you saying, oh, Gene, wait a minute, you are uh, being a little bit overreactive here. Is that really uh, the case? I'm going to tell you, yes, it is for those that live in a condominium. I can tell you again, being in property management and dealing with a lot of condominiums, a lot of elderly people like a condominium, even over that of a townhome. Why? Well, uh, number one, uh, there is, uh, they have uh, generally their parking uh, in underground parking. 
Uh, it's a little bit easier to uh, walk and move around. They don't have to worry about having uh, a lot of uh, outdoor uh, doors going out to the outdoor space. If you live up a few floors, there's it's a little bit more safe. You're close to a number of people. Uh, and, and people feel safe because now uh, uh, an elderly person can now walk away. And I know a number of people that do. We have associations that we manage at New Concepts where a number of, uh, I know one association in particular in Edina, I swear about half of the people at this property are snowbirds, and they're either in Arizona or Florida uh, wintering uh, somewhere, uh, somewhere else where the weather's a little bit nicer. Now, let me go back to the statement I just made that why is it then uh, that because of this policy shift and FHA not allowing recertification because of this prohibition, how is that going to affect the elderly? Well, I can tell you, Will, this way. There is a new tool that uh, elderly people have been using and has been growing in huge popularity. What is it? It's called the reverse mortgage. Have you heard of it? I'm sure you have. What happens with a reverse mortgage? Well, here you have someone who's owned their home all their life, and uh, they now own it free and clear. Uh, They may be on a very uh, set income with their pension, with their social security. And if they've seen anything that's happened because of the economy over the few years, their pensions are down quite a bit. Um, I I have uh, family members that have had their pensions uh, go down by 30 to 50 percent from what it was even six, seven, eight years ago. That makes it kind of hard to be able to make ends meet. And so now for a number of elderly people, they say, what do I have? What other asset do I have? Well, they turn to the asset of their home if it's all paid for. And mortgage companies have said, I tell you what, you're going to continue to live in the home. You're going to continue to maintain it. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to buy it back from you over a period of time. So uh, the reverse mortgage, they take a look at what the value is. Now, typically, if the value is, uh, let's say, uh, $200,000. They say, well, we want to make sure that, oh, about 20% of the value is still there. So we will let you take a mortgage out of 80%. Well, what's 80% of $200,000? $160,000. And they will say, now, would you like this $160,000 over a 10-year period? Over a five-year period? Over a 20-year period? You get to choose. And it's kind of nice. So uh, the person who's elderly now who's seen a loss in their income now is able to see a supplement, and for many, that's uh, allowing them to make ends meet. Well, guess what? Uh, The only reverse mortgages are being done supported with FHA financing. That's right. And if you now take that away from uh, a a, uh, condominium association, which you're going to find an inordinate number of uh, older people there for the reasons I just discussed with you a few minutes ago. And now you take away their ability to get uh, recertified and their ability to uh, put together a reverse mortgage. Now you're going to be putting people uh, under from being able to just uh, stay above water. What was the 1994 amendment to the National Housing Act we talked about? It said here that the purposes are this, to expand the supply of decent, safe, sanitary, and affordable housing. It says, and the primary goal to those with very low incomes and low-income Americans, I submit to you, listeners, that this FHA shift is uh, deleterious to the uh, purposes of the 1994 National Housing Act as described. And once again, we have people who have taken it upon themselves to want to continue to uh, fix things in a very knee-jerk reactionary way. And uh, for a number of people that are in Washington, 
It is, uh, we need we need a, a new amendment. We need a new regulation. And everybody's supposed to jump up and say, how many pages on the way up, right? Is that what is really going on? Is that what is taking place right here? I think we need to really stop. I think we need to write uh, our congressman. I think we need to start contacting people in Washington. They don't necessarily know what is best for us. They need to hear another side of the story. Uh, and so, uh, folks, we're not going to hear this go away anytime soon. Well, hey, that's all the time we have for today's show. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. Look forward to having you here next weekend on Where You Live. Bye. Don't you know to be loved by you? Bye-bye, everybody. To be well, goodbye. I have been chosen. Farewell, my friend. I go on to a better place.